So good morning. On behalf of the HES Consortium Board of Directors, I would like to welcome you to the uh, 2024 Best Practices Showcase to celebrate technology, innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Julianis Vasquez and I will be presenting the speakers for the current sessions in this room. Before we begin, we request your support with the following. Please uh, change your mobile phones to silent mode to have your full attention and avoid interruptions. This session is being recorded. This presentation will be in English. And finally, our staff will pass uh, a QR code out uh, to all the participants to complete the electronic evaluation for this session before you leave the room. You can also find the QR code on your name badge. And your feedback is really important to us, so don't forget to do that. And now we are ready to start. This current session is under the track of retention. The title of this presentation is the Value Program Deploy Free Improved Student Engagement and Retention. And now I leave you with our speaker, Christina Hart, from New Jersey City uh, University. So good morning, everyone. I'm just gonna give one minute. Good morning. Um, it's a DHSI grant, it's a Developing Hispanic, uh, Developing Hispanic Service Institutions grant, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the grant as I go through it. So this is just a little bit about what I plan to cover today. Um, I'll talk a little bit about NGCU, Title V grant itself, our mentoring program, what the problem that we had, the solution that we came up with, and a little bit of the research study that was conducted, and we'll conclude. So New Jersey City University is a uh, urban, public, Hispanic, and minority-serving institution. We're located in New, uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. We have about 5,500 undergraduate students. Um, that number is um, slowly declining, obviously, with the current, um, uh, I guess, things going on in higher ed. Uh, but we have about 1,200 uh, students who are enrolled in STEM programs. Um, our grants, the grant that I work for, we our programming focuses with the STEM um, programs at the institution. About 70% of these students are full time, and 73% of the students uh, enrolled at our institution receive federal uh, student aid. So this is a little bit more about our demographics. Um, I can also like make this presentation available to you guys at the end. So if you um, email me or request, I can share it with you. Um, so uh, we have, you know, more females enrolled um, at the institution than males. Um, you can see that we have 45% Hispanic students at our institution, um, and Black or African American is the second uh, largest population um, at the institution. Um, I also included the fac faculty on campus um, by their ethnic background, and you can see that predominantly a white um, faculty. Um, so you know. So we have a Title V grant called On Pace uh, for STEM Success. Uh, the on Pace, the Pace part stands for the Personal Academic Career and Enhancement at an Urban Public HSI. Uh, we received this grant in 2020 of um, September, um, and we have until 2025 with the grant. So we have about another year and six months, seven months on the grant. Um, and it's a U.S. Department of Ed uh, DHSI Title V Part A grant. We have several initiatives on the grant that um, I work to make sure it runs smoothly. Um, and we have our on-pace mentoring program, uh, summer research internship um, for STEM students, and we have about almost 16 to 20 students just with the one grant um, who uh, earn the internship, and so it's a paid internship. 
Uh, we have a full-time internship post uh, graduate outcomes coordinator. Uh, we offer career services, um, you know, holistic programming of workshops um, that address personal, academic, and um, career uh, exploration. And then we also have a supplemental instruction program. So what I'm going to focus on is the on-pace mentoring program. Um, Dr. Reed Carroll, he's our Title V Activity Director. And this program provides rising sophomores and incoming uh, transfer students with the faculty-based coaching. So it's a faculty-student-led uh, mentoring program. And, you know, we offer them coaching, hopefully, you know, to help them to develop soft skills and, you know, role modeling. So they're receiving that guidance and support that they need. Uh, there's a lot of research shown, right, that mentoring um, is effective practice. And um, the faculty mentors are paired with students within the department uh, or major. So it's about one faculty mentor with about five students. Um, just depends on how many students receive in the program uh, for um, the duration of the academic year. So when we say academic year, it means the fall through the spring semester. Um, they have one-on-one -on -one meetings throughout the semester with the you know, mentors and mentees. And then there are several workshops and group events that we try to um, encourage them to attend throughout the semester. And these workshops will focus um, on career exploration, financial and financial aid literacy, uh, study skills, and different events that we um, have led by practicing professionals. We also um, deployed the peer coaches, which are our junior and senior mentees who participated in a previous year's mentoring program. And they come back to serve as peer coaches to our students, um, you know, to the new work of mentees. So, on the grant, we had a problem of, well, we noticed, I don't want to say problem, um, but we noticed that students were not attending things, they're not engaging, right, they're not participating, they're not, um, you know, it's just a reduced student engagement, and we're doing all of these things for the benefits of the student. So, if they're not coming to these workshops and events, then what's our purpose, right? How are we going to be able to get this information to them? How can we encourage them um, to come? You know, so we needed to provide different type of support, um, and we think, we're thinking of how we could implement possibly educational technology um, to address that. So we came up with um, a digital badging program. So we figured it's cost effective. The programs um, that you know you create digital badges, some of them are free. So the one that we worked with was Badger. Um, you know, it's an innovative use of educational technology. Uh, it's portable because these can be put onto you know your social, uh, your professional and social media networks, right? For our students especially, they want things that can just easily go with them, um, especially when they establish like a digital. Um, like a portfolio, a digital resume, things like that. Um, you know, an established credibility for our students, uh, right? It's a credential that helps to prepare the students to enter the workforce. Uh, we want to make sure that we support them because at the end of the day, yes, we want them all to get their degrees, but are they ready to go into that workforce? Um, are they going to be successful? So employers are looking to see what makes them, you know, what sets them apart from other students who are applying to these jobs. So these are, uh, this is an image over here, sorry I know it's a little small, but uh, these are the three badges that we created. Um, one of them was a STEM academic success badge, one was a STEM career prepared, and then a STEM undergraduate research scholar badge. We're working on a fourth one, and hopefully that will be centered around financial um, literacy uh, for our students. So uh, when creating the digital badging program, we kind of, you know, this was new to us. Um, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of um, research and studies and, and different types of badging platforms. Um, but we worked with our Center for Leadership and Student Engagement. We reached out to them and it turned out that they already had been using digital badging. We just hadn't heard about it just yet. Um, so we collaborated with them. They had already access to the platform. It was free. Um, they were using Badger at the time. Um, and you know we worked with them to create the different badges. You know the, the look of the badge, kind of give it a, a way to represent NGCU because those are our colors and the theme of the, the institution. 
Um, and you know, we came up with different badges as well as how do they earn these badges. Like there's levels, right? You're not gonna be able to get everything done right at a, in, in one year. Um, so we give them more time to complete all this um, the requirements. So level one, we had level two and level three. For example, I'll use our STEM undergraduate research badge um, as an example. The first one was, you know, looking into level one was looking into different research opportunities, um, attending our STEM um, undergraduate research symposium, um, or attending different student research workshops that we had on campus. We had several. Um, also, the second level was to actually get some research experience under your belt. So, you know, identify and apply for at least two internships, and um, either at NJCU or outside of NJCU, and then complete one. So you either complete one on campus, outside of campus, and, you know, we encouraged our students to, you know, connect with the STEM professors and connect with our um, internship coordinator so that they can find that support and guidance to actually find these internships. Some students find it very difficult, you know, they don't have that um, environment at home where like mom and dad know how to find this information, so you know that's what our job is. We're there to help them find that information. And then the last would be to actually present their research. So we kind of gave them that opportunity at the end of the internship program. Um, we have a cumulative, like a um, culminating event at the end. All the students present their research. We also have a event in the fall where they we have an undergraduate research symposium, and they would present their uh, research as well. So we kind of lay these opportunities out for them. So they were actual workshops and events that we were having on campus to kind of encourage them to, you know, attend <laughs> and hopefully earn the digital badge and that's something that they could put on their resume, on their um, LinkedIn account, right? Uh, and all of these badging um, platforms are easily integratable into these different platforms that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. So currently, um, NGCU, at NGCU, the first year we were able to award 37 uh, badges um, in 2023, so at the end of um, last spring, and we're working on our, our current batch of students, so we're hoping to have our um, recognition event. We had one in spring, um, right around the graduation time. A lot of our students were those who were either in their junior year or seniors, and we were able to award 37 students with the digital badges, and you know we've been able to showcase them, and you know, show that they have experience, for example, in undergraduate research, especially when it comes to applying to graduate schools, uh, if they're interested in doing PhDs or, um, you know, going into a master's program, for example, in research. It's very helpful. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the research that we did. Um, at that time, I was currently, myself, um, enrolled in my, district, um, my EDD program in Educational Technology Leadership. So I jumped at the opportunity to do a little bit of um, research uh, and see how effective the pilot um, program was with our students. Um, you know, so I conducted a qualitative exploratory case study. I really wanted to talk to the students and find out what their experience with the digital badging was and identify what you know motivated them. What was the impact the digital badging had on the mentee students um, who were um, part of the on-case mentoring program at NGCO. Um, you know, we were using the digital badges to improve student engagement and motivation across campus to attend. Uh, we, even though we um, were working with the on-case mentoring program, we still pushed the digital badging initiative to all of our STEM students, um, just in hopes that other students would kind of catch on and it would uh, encourage them to attend as well or maybe encourage them to join the on-pace mentoring program because it's an optional program. Yes? Could you go back to your last slide yes. real quick? Yes. Sorry. Um, so we really wanted, I, I wanted to determine how digital badges contributed to their student success, uh, career planning, and postgraduate outcomes um, in the future, how they plan for that. Too. So the research questions, uh, where what are the benefits and challenges of utilizing digital badges? You know, it was a new concept on campus, and not only on campus, but you know, it's a, it's a newer um, technology. Um, what motivated our STEM students to earn these digital badges, and how did the digital badging uh, impact their participation and engagement um, with the office mentoring program and other you know, mentees, of course? 
So analyzing all of the information, I, I did one-on-one -on -one interviews with the students. I um, also had a uh, preliminary questionnaire I had sent to them prior to that. Um, and what came back were um, these nine um, kind of points that stood out to the students. Um, community, uh, it was an emerging concept, motivation, accomplishment, uh, it was beneficial, uh, gave them an opportunity, um, personal growth, and career goals, as well as challenges. I mean, in any type of um, program or initiative, you're always going to have the benefits, but also challenges that students will face. Sorry, I'm going a little fast. <laughs> so, um, they listed several benefits to, you know, using digital badges. Um, they were easy to display. Um, they, some students found it then easy to, um, to earn. Um, they were, you know, then when some of the challenges though were kind of similar to what they said the benefits, like they say it was difficult for me to attend the workshop. So you know, we had specific workshops at specific times of the day. How could we, you know, address that issue, right? So that was a challenge. Some of the students couldn't make it to the to the workshops or had difficulty um, you know understanding what the requirements were, right? And then it's a new thing. It's it's something that, you know, you know, you've heard of digital badges, you've heard of um, micro-credentials, but, you know, they don't understand the actual meaning of, you know, what a digital badge is. So, you know, if they didn't attend the workshop on what digital badges were, introducing them to the whole, you know, phenomenon that we're trying to bring to the campus, you know, they found it a bit difficult. Um, so when you talked about community, they said um, about 35% strongly agreed and 35% also agreed. Um, that they would recommend digital badging to their peers. So that was something very positive because they felt that they had a community of peers um, who had similar interests just like them um, when, you know, trying to, you know, earn these badges. Yes? A quick question. I'm sorry yeah. if I missed it in the beginning, but your entire sample for this study was 37 students? No, it wasn't the 37 that were awarded. It was about 20 students for were? this study. Okay, and those yes. were students that were on pace. Yeah, part of the mentoring program. Okay. Yes. Sorry for that. I should have clarified that. Um, once again, you see how student participation is very difficult to get. Um, even you know, being a part of their world, it was still um, very difficult to have students you know give up their time to participate in any type of questionnaire and any type of interview. Um, I believe it, I was only able to get about 20 students who would say yes. I'll sit down and and give you some information and feedback about the program. We had about 60 students in total who were part of the on-pace mentoring program, and only 20 of those students from that previous year, um, because this was going back a year uh, during the pilot program, which I believe was 21 to 22 academic year, um, and then also reached up to the 22, 23, but we didn't have as many students who were part of that program just yet. So, um, but yeah, the population was very small for just the research aspect of it. Um, but word has gotten around now <laughs> after the whole study and, and things like that. So we have a lot more students um, in the mentoring program. We have about now 75. So it's about 15 more students than we would, 75 like additional students. So each year we, we recruit a whole new group of students. So 60 plus the 75 gives you about 130 more. Um, that's why I'm not a math major. Um, but you know, um, it helps because students get the word out. And, and adding those that peer coach kind of piece, those students who had participated and earned badges were able to encourage other students to participate in our in the digital badging program and on pace mentoring. Okay. Yeah. But they felt a sense of community because um, other students were on the same journey. You know what I mean? And, and that's kind of important, whether it's just in the mentoring program or outside. Um, if you're in a specific major, right, you want to feel that sense of community because then you have other students who are the same um, either academic or career goals that you have. Um, we, you know, they were asked how did the digital badging impact their participation and engagement within the on-pace mentoring program. They said it helped with their career goals, right? It gave them an advantage that other students didn't, you know, gave them that advantage that other students uh, didn't have. You know, they felt a sense of accomplishment when earning the digital badge, or you know, at least trying to earn the digital badge, because other students were not doing that. 
and you know, it, you know, just really help to encourage and motivate them to um, seek this credential um, that would, you know, set them apart from others who are applying to a different, to the same internship as them, um, or you know, a dip, uh, a, maybe like an internship off campus, especially um, on campus. It's, we feel, I feel, it's a bit. Um, our students are are more inclined to part, um, apply for our on campus internships because they feel a bit comfortable. But you know, when they're going off campus, it's really helpful for them to um, feel that sense of accomplishment and that they have that advantage because it would really motivate them to you know go out off campus. You know? And then when talking about personal growth. Um, participating in the digital badge program challenged them to come out of their comfort zone and that's really important for our students um, whether it's you know seeking this credential or you know talking to other people and and looking for those opportunities it really gets them out of their comfort zone um, you know and it just creates that like sense of opportunity for them to Now what motivated them to earn the digital badges? These were the top three. Increase their motivation. Um, it gave them a chance for their own personal growth and gave them that sense of community. Mm -hmm. So these are some quotes from our students and obviously these are not the actual names of our students. Um, but you know, one of the students said that I was motivated to earn a digital badge because I believe it would make me more qualified for that job. Um, it was a great motivational tool and it will help me in the future as well, uh, the second student. So they really had a um, positive and, and you know, increase in their motivation uh, by participating and earning their digital badges. Um, you know, digital badges, they're a resourceful tool which supports our students' academic and postgraduate outcomes. Um, it's, a, it's impactful when utilized correctly and you know, increase the student motivation and engagement. Um, it's really created that sense of community for them. You know what I mean? On campus, it's a it's a group that they'll work together, stay you know, stay connected, um, and encourage each other. You know, that's and that's very difficult to find sometimes when you're on campus because you know sometimes you think you're like the only person that's trying to get to you know the next step, but no, there are others in, in the same um, field, uh, you know boat <laughs> trying to get to the same uh, destination. So um, some future things that um, just came out of the study, but also um, looking at the program itself. Uh, we want to be able to offer the digital, the digital badges to all students on campus. So um, maybe kind of making them a little bit more general instead of just to STEM um, students, right? Giving, maybe creating a few other badges or maybe kind of um, steering away from just STEM, right? So then that way everybody on campus has that chance to earn a credential, um, you know what I mean? And then continuing to evaluate and assess our programs because that's how you improve programs. So what, what didn't work the first time? How can we uh, change uh, those things? Um, and something that came out was definitely marketing. Um, you know, I guess creating or making things maybe um, like recording maybe a workshop, right? So then that way they can have easy access to it. Um, you know, I guess just putting it out there more, sending out different flyers. Uh, you know, we try to text our students and email them, but email sometimes gets difficult because they're not just, they're not opening the emails anymore. Um, you know, they get about 20 to 30 emails a day from the campus. So how effective can that form of communication be? Um, so, you know, kind of getting faculty buy-in, right, would be helpful too. Um, but you know, increasing our or changing the market stra marketing strategy that we have, um, and then you know, how do we integrate digital badging into other programs on campus? So whether it's like an orientation to college course, you know, how can you um, weave the, the digital badging in there, especially when it comes to like financial aid and literacy? And this is the idea that we're kind of trying to go with is you know, we want to increase their knowledge in certain things because they need to have that knowledge financial aid, for example, or just in financial literacy itself. Um, but how do we get that information to the students? How can we make it more engaging um, for them to, you know, participate? Um, you know, digital badging is a form of gamification, and you know, it's like a reward at the end of the um, at the end of the, the lesson, for example, or um, and you know, it really just displays that 
knowledge in a specific topic or a skill that you would hold. Um, and you know, us as academic um, individuals in, in higher ed, like we can earn our own digital badges in different, you know, um, uh, courses or you know, just for example, like Google has so many different digital badges um, for um, you know different topics. So kind of encouraging our students to kind of you know seek those opportunities. Um, you know, it's like informal kind of learning, but keeping it fun, uh, we thought was a really important uh, thing to do. Yep, and these are some references. <laughs> um, so these are uh, references. And then, thank you. I think I really zipped through that presentation. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so you. sorry, I'm just nervous, so. <laughs> thank you for the presentation. <laughs> thank you. So now we're gonna have the Q&A session. So please raise your hand before doing your question and state your name and institution before doing your question. And we're gonna start in the back. Um, Dr. Sumaya Villanueva, Assistant Provost for Academic Engagement at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, City University of New York. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. So I'm super curious, you were saying that of the 20 students that participated actively in your study, one of the things that you noticed is that students are more prone to seek out opportunities that are within the institution maybe not so much outside, but part of doing the program in and of itself is to encourage them to participate in out, you know, external internships and also garner right, work opportunities in the fields that they're interested in. So did you have any um, you know, tracking of the students that participated in your studies about those 20? Did any of them, in fact, secure internships externally? Are they working in the fields that they're interested in? What kind of information have you been able to track based on those 20 students that participated in this study? Thank you for your question. Um, so we were, or we are, because tracking is always a difficult thing. <laughs> um, yes. And I speak in, in because you know, I, I've held different roles throughout high, my role, my um, journey in higher, my, um, my time in higher ed, but um, it's always difficult to, to get that information from a student. So they'll seek an internship, get it, and not even tell us they got the internship, <laughs> which is so kind of upsetting because we want to hear the good. We want to hear that, hey, you know, whatever you may have done on campus, or maybe you didn't do, maybe we didn't help you, but at least, you know, share that, hey, I did earn this internship. Um, I can tell you that, I don't know the exact number, but of those 20 students, um, all of them have done internships on campus, and about 50% of them have done off-campus internships and continue to apply for internships. Um, we work very closely with our internship post-outcomes grad um, outcomes graduate coordinator. We just call her short IPOC. Um, it's so much easier to call her that, but her name is Sarah McGuff, and she does such a great job at continuously reaching out to our students, continuously pushing out that information that we get on internships outside of our institution alone. We encourage our students that, you know, you do one internship, if you get one on campus, fine. But next year, it's not guaranteed to come back and do an internship on campus with us. We don't want you to do a second one here. So make sure that you're applying off campus. So we really engage with them. We have workshops. We work with um, HAKU. Uh, we have the representative speak from HNIP. Uh, their, inter um, their internship program come on campus or you know Zoom. So we try to find um, all the different internships and get that information to them. Um, but yes, our students are getting those internships and they are staying within their field. And some when they do the internships re actually realize that they don't want to do an internship, for example, in research. Um, or they don't want to stay in research. So they kind of change their course and that's the whole point of this. Um, you know, doing an internship is the best way to kind of see is this really the path that I want to stay on as a student? So that you know you're not completing an education and then going into a field you actually don't want to be in. You know you want to make sure that you know that's actually the track and and your future. Because obviously we all know that if you're not happy in your at, at your job <laughs> or in your career, um, it's not going to be successful. Or you're not just you know you know we're very passionate individuals. I can tell from the room of people that I'm in, you're all passionate, and that's why you're here. So I think that's um, the goal for our students. I know, uh, I had another question prior to, anybody? Do you have a question? Yeah, this is Francisco Garcia from <laughs> University of Texas. Sorry, didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, and the question is more into the administration of the program itself. You said you use Badger, right? Yes. It's not Canvas credential. Um, but you said that it was free? <laughs> yes. Okay, that, so at the, at the moment, it was free. Okay. Now, Badger, I think, was acquired by another company. Canvas and I haven't seen a bill come to me <laughs> <laughs> or to our grant because, you know, we have the grant funds to, to pay for these things and that's the whole point of the grant funds. Um, but we are working with another department on campus so they may have taken care of the cost for us. Oh. Um, and, you know, the system itself doesn't really help us in the tracking, right, of how have you, you know, done, have you done A, B, C to actually earn the badge. So we have to do a lot of that manually and internally which is very, very tedious. So finding a way to do that, if you have any ideas or any secrets, please share with me. Um, but it it's, could be very um, difficult. I feel like you need like a full-time person just to kind of constantly track our students and, and, and do that, but you know, it's difficult to hire people nowadays. So, um, or find funds to hire people on a full-time basis. But at the moment we were using Magic, but I know that they were acquired by a different company. I don't have a name, but I can get that information. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, first of all, uh, you shouldn't be nervous. You did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, your institution I know well, and it's the demographic population is very similar. I'm uh, Tomas Morales from uh, California State University, San Bernardino. 68% um, Latino, 80% um, first generation. So mm -hmm. demographics are very similar. And your theme uh, throughout your presentation was re-engaging students. We have found our students to be more disengaged yes. than prior to the pandemic. Are you seeing that? I'm, I'm going to ask you, but also our colleagues here. Are you seeing that pattern at your respective institutions? Yes. Yeah. And what are you doing to try to counter that? Besides the badges. I, mean, I think the badges are a great idea. But. I guess after the, the, the pandemic, like the keynote speaker was saying, I mean, there's a different way to see education now. Mm -hmm. So even students are looking for different ways to engage. It's not only participating physically into activities or things like that, but more use, the use of their technologies. I mean, we know blogs and other things that uh, becoming more popular in, among students. Again, they're, they're used to social media, which is a totally different way of using technology in the academia. Um, but I think that's something that needs to be more, what the opportunity is there to use more technology to keep the students engaged. Uh, I mean, that's my two cents. No, and, I, and I, I, I agree, and um, if you'd like to add something, and then I can, go ahead. That's a separate okay. question. So. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, but I definitely, um, I hear that it's, it's been a struggle to keep our students engaged. I also teach adjunct um, with the biology department at our institution, and I'm always trying new things. And having the background in educational technology, I always try to incorporate different, you know, active learning things and, and you know, um, different, you know, projects and changing things around. And I think when you hear when the students say, oh, I really enjoyed this class, um, you know, I didn't really like biology before coming into your class, and now I kind of do, and I'm thinking about taking a second biology course. I'm like, wow, maybe I did something right this uh, this term. So I think um, what the keynote speaker said was, you know, trying things out and seeing how they work. Some might work for one student or a group of students, but it's it's really like a, a trial and error kind of process, especially in higher education, and finding what works um, and how can we, you know, use it, but not like abuse it kind of thing because. You know, that's like how we abuse emails, you know, and then it's become an effective form of communication for us with our students. Go ahead. Christina, so my name's Tom Mills. I'm the president of Hill College in Texas. And my questions are back to the, the Badger, you know, the yes. mechanism. Yes. So just let me throw a bunch of questions at you. And then you can, so what do they look like? Um, do you have any examples? Are, what's the mechanism that you use to get them to the students? Are they transcripted? Have you thought about doing transcripted badges? Everything like all that. So because it was a pilot um, announced, this is the second, or actually we're going to the third year. Oh my goodness, time flies. Um, but the badges, like I mentioned, they look like this. 
Um, and students, um, once they earn them, they're sent an email, and then they're able to kind of download the badge, and then there's instructions on how to upload it into your preferred um, platform. So if you want to display it on LinkedIn, um, and each badge has its own like metadata within the badge. So it kind of tells you when it was earned, what did you need to do to um, earn it. So you know when you click on it, there, there, you know there should be um, links. I'm sorry, I don't have an actual example of that. No, um, but you know it's it's. You can see here that you know, we have our NGCU logo, we also have the Center for Leadership and Engagement, because what the Center for Leadership and Engagement was, was work with us, so that their students, who are our students too, were able to kind of attend our own workshops and events and kind of help them with their um, leadership, um, because they have the Honor Society, and they've encouraged their students to do um, um, different things, and we kind of work together in that sense, um, which was helpful. But you know you have the name of the badge, and we have our grant information, you know our grant uh, logo there as well. Um, but it tells you who issued it, why, when, how long it's valid for, and things like that. So that's kind of what the digital badge would um, give you for that information. So transcripts. We don't have them on the transcript. So it's pretty much you mean like the institutional transcript? Right. No, we don't have them on there. Um, I think that you have to probably get different permissions and go through some type of um, <laughs> uh, you know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you'd have to do that, but um, you know the students are able to display them on their own, you know, resumes and different, you know, digital portfolios. So I think that's um, helpful for them. And I know having them on a transcript would be a good idea. So have to look into how that process would be and talk to our registrar's office because there must be, um, you know, some type of rules. You know, there's a process. For them. Thank you. I, were you yeah, I was going to answer to the question, Dr. Tomas, and then kind of to the question about transcripting, because uh, Eduardo Leva, California State University, Long Beach Director of Equity Programs. So uh, back to the engagement, absolutely right. The disengagement of students, you know. Uh, but the one thing that I am finding out is that specific programs that are equity programs, like the Education Opportunity Program that I'm the director of and Guardian Scholars, mm -hmm. which supports foster youth, one of the things that we're finding out that we get more students engage because one, there's money attached to it, right? Mm -hmm. That's one. <laughs> so two, it's also because, you know, from the onboarding process, you know, our students for EOP, they come to a residential bridge and they build community. Then in the first year, we require for them to take a first year course where we work with the faculty that we hire internally and they are required to engage in our engagement activities. So for example, uh, we have our ice cream, you know, um, social, we get 150 students. Right, and then we have our, you know, um, taco tra tra ta taco transfer Tuesdays, oh, where we bring in our new transfer <laughs> students, and we get about close to sixty students. Right, so depend depending on the onboarding process, the continuing students. One thing that we've done with an EOP is that we send them a reminder, like, hey, as an EOP student, you're required to com complete these workshops, but our online Zoom workshops are up to the max. Like, we get hundred and twenty students that join us and in our in-person we get like 10. So um, I agree with you, there's a lot of disengagement. Yeah, let, me, let me just talk, I mean, as an EOP, I was an EOP director, <laughs> a very young boy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an in local parentis approach, yeah. right? It's like, we're not gonna let you fail. You're required to go to tutoring. You're required to develop the relationship. But when you got 20,000 yeah. students, yeah. you know, what incentives or disincentives can you create badges are certainly an incentive, Absolutely. but what incentives or disincentives do you create to kind of force feed, if you will, students that we have to go back to a, a more in local parentis approach, mm -hmm. particularly for first generation students. They have no one at home. Yeah. Mom and dad love them, uh -huh. but mom and dad do not understand the journey, mm -hmm. the higher ed journey that they are on. Right? My kids would call me and say, Dad, I want to change my major. What do you think? Yeah. Different, di different environments for many of our students. It's a real challenge. I'm sorry. No, no, but you're right. So one of the things that actually before I came to Puerto Rico, um, I met with my AVP because, you know, we're trying to figure out under student affairs. We have actually, it's interesting because we have also this language called PACE. I call it, per so, you know, when we look at being a holistic, mm -hmm. we have personal, academic, career, and engagement, right? So when we talk to our students about these type of holistic approaches is now our job now is how do we embed it 
in a university-wide experience that is not just concentrated in EOP mm. or Guardian mm -hmm. Scholars or TRIO and where it's large to the whole university. So we talked about digital badging because the Career Center has used digital badging in the past, but now how do you how do you give a student an experience where they get to pick different tracks in digital badging? And then the, the question here the president asked was, you know, how do you put it in the transcript? And that would be the that, 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 be that, that'll be the, the idea, be right? Because, you know, uh, I just got back. Council Long Beach got the Seal of Excellence. I was part of the committee. And one of the biggest concepts there is how do you prepare students from um, from from you know from major to career right so I think digital badging can be that route and we incentivize the students to say hey you may not get something right now but if you participate the long run you'll be more qualified to get that ideal job so congratulations on the work that you're doing because I'm a thank contact you and, and, I'm a contact and, you later, so. and this is really like I said this is um, preliminary we're still trying to figure it out and it's not easy because there's so much stuff yeah. on our desk to do um, you know making sure that we have an introduction to digital badge workshop Making sure students attend. The Zoom workshops, I get 10 people on there. And then I get another maybe five in person. And you only have like 15 people out of a, a whole group of people that I emailed. I'm like, how disappointing is that? Because we put so much work and so much of ourselves right into the work that we do. And it's it's quite upsetting. Um, but we still do it, right? It's our job. We have, you know, we, we, we have to keep pushing through. We have to keep trying to find different ways to do what we have, to, uh, what we're you know tasked to do. Go ahead. And that's gonna be the last question. Yes, last question. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's not a question. It's uh, a comment I, about engagement. No, and one thing is that when we ask students, precisely because mm -hmm. they're first generation, mm -hmm. oftentimes, mm -hmm. so are the students in my college. Um, when we're asking to do, uh, ask them to do things outside of what they need to do in the classroom, sometimes it doesn't work. Right, because they have all these other things that are competing for their attention. So sometimes it's like, how do we find pockets or places where we can embed things and we can partner with faculty? Because the majority of the time that the students spend on campus, they spend in the classroom. So when we partner with faculty who are conscientious and understand that this is not a byproduct or something that is integral and important, mm -hmm. then we can go that much further. Again, I'm not saying that no, it's no, easy and task. I think, I think I, I agree, and I think the majority of us here agree yeah. with that. Uh, and I mentioned, you know, a great way to do this would be maybe in an orientation to college course. Um, yeah. Doing things in cohorts usually is very successful, yeah. um, but it, it, it's difficult because, you yeah. know, like um, you mentioned, you know, EOP, and for us it's EOF at, in, in, New, right. in New Jersey, yeah. um, you know, there's a stipend there. There's about $500 to $1,000 that they yeah. get a semester to cover, help them cover tuition, books, right. you know, whatever they need. You know, to attend these things. Um, you know, there may be ways to do it if you know you have grant funding and, and things like that, and etc. But it's it's a lot. You know what I mean? It's it's a lot for students to do things outside of their normal academic requirements. But finding a way to like work with faculty, how can we build it into a curriculum? You know, that you have a 15-week course, you should be able to earn a badge during that 15-week yeah. course. You know. So um, I really want to say thank you for attending the workshop. 